So now we're down to the first continuation of uh, the lesson which was made by Ma'am Janine Lucero and what we're going to do now is to continue all the lessons that you have, uh, that you have started. So what we're going to discuss is the pre-colonial Philippine literature. When we say pre-colonial, it is before the colonizer or the people from other country colonize our country. So, when we talk about pre-colonial literature in the Philippines, this refers to the literature of the formative past by the various groups of people who inhabited the archipelago. So, during that time, since uh, we're not, uh, we are not yet being uh, conquered by other country or other colonizer in our in our archipelago in the whole country we don't have yet the the forms of literature or the culture that we are following a literature a literature of varying uh, human interests it is close to the religious and political organizations of the ancient philippines the verses were addressed to the ears rather than the eyes so if you're going to compare the form of literature uh, for today and back then the manner of the delivery is being addressed to the ears rather than to the eyes of people verses composed in song were regarded as group property so if it all about leg legendary and religious poems most specifically it is under octosyllabic type of poetry but when it, it is uh, all about romance somehow it is classified as dodica syllabic type of poetry or verses so these are some of the examples of ancient Filipino poetry dalawang balon hindi malingon Sa araw ay bunbong, sa gabi ay daon. Riddle or buktong. So, you commonly use this when we are young. And uh, we're just doing this as a sort of uh, challenge. When we tell something about a riddle or when we say some riddle or ask some riddle for our friends, we tend to challenge them for what would be the possible answer. Riddle is made up of one or more measured lines with rhymes and may consist of 4 to 12 syllables. Showcase the Filipino wit, literally, uh, literary, uh, literary talent, and keen observation of the surroundings. It involves reference to one or two images that symbolize the characteristics of an unknown object that is to be guessed and uh, as we grow old we have to know the purpose why we are telling such words or why we are asking such riddles from our friends and way back then there is uh, there are purpose or there are purposes that is being expressed why do we need to uh, or ask such riddle or bugto. So the first one is to entertain. Living in remote areas, before the advent of electricity, families would sit around the fire and the elders would quiz the younger generation with riddles. In that particular way, uh, these little children were able to know what would be the possible answer. And uh, try to ask it again from other people so that they are passing now the challenge to the other who are who they ask for that particular riddle so the main purpose uh, one of the main purpose is to entertain the next one is to educate riddle serves the function of passing down knowledge from one generation to the next they require thinking in order to solve them Next is to titillate. Many old Filipino riddles contain double and tenders that were intended to amuse the men and shock the women. 
The next one is to curse without expressly without expressly cursing. A riddle could be made up against an enemy, rival town, or suitor. The next one is to preserve the culture. Riddles communicate the old ways from one generation to another. So I have here some example of uh, some examples of riddle. Ate mo, ate ko, ate ng lahat ng tao. My sister, your sister, everyone's sister. It's Atis or the sugar apple. Next is the salawikain at sawikain. Now, what's the difference between the two? So you'll later fi uh, find out what would be the difference between the two. Uh, short poems that have been customarily been used and serve as laws or rules on good behavior by our ancestors. Uh, allegories or parables that impart lessons for the young and often expressing a single idea that is usually satirical and had a witty ending. So, I have here another example of Salawi Kain, Ang matapat na kaibigan, tunay na maaasahan. So, as you can see, uh, it uses rhythmic patterns to make it more creative. And aside from that, it, teach, it teaches us uh, good manners or how we are supposed to behave towards other people. Ang mabigat ay gumagaan kung pinagtutulong. So, it's a picture of a bayanihan where as the primitive house, bahay kubo, is being carried by these people helping each other together for them to move that particular house. Next, example of sawikai. Kumukulo ang dugo. Blood is boiling. So, blood is boiling means that a person is very, very angry. Right? So, it's just like a simple slogan that uh, expresses an idea but not directly to the point or but not directly to what is being presented by the words. Uh, when we talk about Salawikain, just like what we saw a while ago, it's a proverb. Proverb or Salawikain in Tagalog. Example of another example of sawikain or uh, a slogan, sulat sa tubig, write on water. Uh, when you say write on water, uh, it is also mean uh, it also means forget about it because once you're writing something on the water, it vanishes, right? So it it fades and it will never be seen again. Because you can no longer write something with the water, right? Next is Maxims. Another example of Maxims are Pag hindi buhol, hindi bubuhol. Okay, when we talk about Maxims, uh, with this particular maxims, uh, what is not intended for one will not bear fruit. Next is Tanaga or Tanaga. A quatrain with seven syllables, each with the same rhyme at the end of each line. So it has no title. It has seven syllables for each line and with the rhythmic pattern of AABB so take a look at this one example tahak ng tingin tulak ng sulyak yakap lapat ng titig sa balikan hatak pa hindat hakap 
So if you're looking at the rhythmic pattern, it follows A, A, and B, B. So it means the first and the second line uh, ends with the same sound and uh, the third and the fourth line ends with the same sound. Next is Mi. Derived from Philippine folk literature, which is the traditional oral literature of the Filipino people. This refers to a wide range of material due to the ethnic mix of the Philippines. There are many different creation myths in the Philippine mythology originating from various um, ethnic groups. The first one is the story of Batala. The second one is Visayan version. And then the third one is the legend of Maria Makili. Uh, Bathala, in other terms, they refer to this, or in ancient Tagalog theology, Bathala or Batala is a pantheon of God creation, a uh, pantheon God of creation in the ancient Philippine civilization before the Spanish colonial period. So they are, uh, they are pertaining to Bathala as their God. He was the supreme being and the omnipotent creator of the universe. So that's according to Antonia, uh, Antonio de Morga. Among others, thought that Bathala meant an omen bird. Uh, or in other terms, Tigma Manukan. But the author of the Boxer Codex in 1590, he advised that uh, not used in its this sense because they did not consider it God but only his messenger so according to some uh, books I have considered for for me to teach this one is Bathala is not the God itself it is the bird or the omen bird or in Tagalog the Tigma Manuka who or which is only the messenger of the God. Next is folk songs. Folk songs is a form of folk lyric which expresses the people's hopes, aspirations, and styles. Repetitive and sonorous, didactic and naive, traditional songs and melodies inspired by the re reaction of people to their environment so when we talk about folk songs these are songs created uh, according to their living or to their culture a song that originates in traditional popular culture or that is written in such a style for example, ang katoto kapag tunay, hindi ngiti ang pangalay, kundi isang katapatan ng mataus na pagdangan. Uh, it is a folk song entitled Kaibigan ni Emelita Perez Baez. Palay siyang matino ng humangi yumuko, ngunit muling tumayo, nagkabunga ng ginto. Kurakot. Inumit na sa lapi, walang makakapagsabi kahit napiping saksi na itago na kasi. So that's how we're going to end our lesson for the pre-colonial period or Philippine literature during the pre-colonial period. And uh, we're just going to have another discussion right after this. Thank you for listening.